Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. Today we're going to work on answering a question that comes into the Digest about twice a year through one of our contact forms, and that's how do I start a fire? Well, normally everything you see from us is really heavy into primary source research. Where do we get this account? Where do we get that? This is one we've had a hard time finding good accounts about, but we're going to go back to 30 plus years of experimental archaeology for me, who started out as a bit of a firebug even before I got into living history. Let's get started. Well, what do you need to build a fire? It doesn't matter whether you're at a park living history or whether you're at a campaigner event where you just march into camp. The things are pretty much common. You need a way to start a fire, you need a way for that fire to grow larger, and then you need something to cook with. We're used to at many events getting our hands on good dry firewood because people want to provide for us. We've got some of that here. I would suggest that that's not the soldier's average. It's the reason that these rails like this, like a fence rail, take the top rail only. So many of these great historic stories. Why is a fence rail a great thing? Well, if an army marches into an area and you can get a fence rail, you have dry firewood. If not, you're cutting a tree down. They were building greenwood fires. To get that fire going enough to burn that, we've got to get it started. So here we have good dry firewood. We have a rail from a uh, snake rail fence nearby. We have some wood soaking as if it were a rainy day because we've got a beautiful day to shoot this episode. And then we've got things we would have with us. I've got a couple examples of matches from a more period style that's harder to get your hands on to a match safe some vendors have to an original match safe with Strike Anywhere matches, which is the way we're gonna build our fire today because we think it's the most common around. We have a steering candle Steering is the most common form of candle during the Civil War, with beeswax being somewhere further down the list, no matter what we think. Finally, amongst the mess that I march with, one of us is carrying a hatchet, and I grab that, and I have my pocket knife, because we need to take stuff and make it smaller. Let's go ahead. We're going to go into the woods behind me. If we're going to start a fire, we need some tinder. Let's go back there, and we'll come back here once we have some tinder. So let's go back and find a good way to look for it. All right, so we've moved behind our camp into the woods. If you're looking for sticks for kindling, it's real easy to say, hey, look at the ground, pick up something, and this is a great place to start. You're looking for dead wood. One, in today's world, you're not gonna harm a tree that could grow. Two, you're gonna have something dry to start your fire. We'll take this with us. Okay, that's great. Now, what if it's raining? Let's face it, over the years, we've seen some pretty cruddy events, and the men back then did too. How do you go ahead and start a fire? What's your best chance? Well, on the ground has all the rain coming down, soaking in it, and it's sitting on the ground, staying wet. Your best chance, if it is raining or has been raining, is to look for dead stuff that's not on the ground. All right, so we've moved a little bit deeper here, and this is another great spot. Again, it's easy to pick up dead wood off the ground. What if it's raining? Dead tree like this, pieces up in the air like this, that's going to be dead, and even if it's wet on the outside, you'll be able to break it open and get to the inside and get to some dry stuff. Let's collect a little bit about the, of this, and let's go get our fire started. Now we've added to this a little bit. We've got firewood that was left for us, or a rail. Now we've got some kindling, and we've got our fire starting material. It's time to get serious. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to break this up into smaller pieces. I want something for the fire to catch. I don't have any dry grass right here, so we're gonna need something small for it to catch on, like some shavings. If we take a look at the bark that came with some of this wood, that's gonna be good stuff to get us going as well. Little sticks like this are gonna be really helpful because they'll catch quick. Okay, so we've broken up some of the little sticks down here, and the wind is coming from here today. So I'm working in this corner of the small fire pit we dug. We're working in the lee side. If you're in a campaigner situation where you don't have to dig a fire pit, we're at the Waterloo Historical Society today. They've asked us to make sure we do this to care for their lawn. That's fine. You're going to be in both of these situations. You just want to get the young where the young fire where you put it is as protected as possible and so we've chosen here with the wind we're going to work down in what we call the lee of it and that'll take care of it now that i've got some kindling there i really want just some last stuff to be able to catch fire quickly 
one thing we can do is we can take our hatchet and we can just split some dry stuff off here. That ought to be enough. Okay, so that's all well and good. Where else is a hatchet like this a handy thing? Well, what happens if it's raining out? This log was dry, but it's been raining, or in our case, we've soaked it in something. Let's take the hatchet. And you see just how quickly we can expose dry wood from wet wood on the underside. It's still a little damp, but it's much drier than it's outside. If we're trying to get a fire started in the rain, here's one great way to do it. All right, so it's been raining and you're stuck somewhere like many of us were even back at the Wahatchee event, where even the tinder on kindling on the trees was wet. What do you do? Pocket knife, you found that dead wood. Let's go on the inside to get something to start. We come down here. And just like using the hatchet on the bigger stuff, we can get past the wet and the dry, get inside there. And these pieces are pieces we can go ahead and use. Same thing's gonna happen with your fence rail. If you can get into it, you can get to dry wood. It's what the soldiers were after. With everything close by, now it's time to talk about building this. And I'm gonna work from the bottom up. I've got everything there. I've got a shape planned. I've pulled it back just a little bit. The next thing I'm gonna do is start a fire. Notice around here, other than the wrapping for the one set of matches, I don't have any paper. What do I do? Soldiers were issued a pound of candles for a company for every couple of days. Somebody in your mess is gonna have a small chunk of a candle. The steering burns long, and one trick that I found is that it burns on its side. This is definitely not something that I found out of period accounts, but something I've done with experimental archeology. span We're gonna start the candle, use it to start the fire, and then pull whatever's left over out. Once I've, got a, once I've got a fire started with my candle and leave the match in there, because that's also good tinder, we'll go ahead and just start piling the little stuff close to get a flame started. Remember, I'm gonna keep the candle back here where I can get it out when we're done. I'm gonna build from the other side. Just gonna remember to go back. All these chips that I've chipped off with the hatchet, they're gonna be helpful. As you see, the smoke is starting to come from above. That's not all from the candle. Here we go. I think I have enough. I'm gonna pull my candle out. Remember, these are valuable. Soldiers don't get a ton of them. Light is, could be really helpful at night, whether it's checking something out, whether it's writing a letter home. Shepherd your resources. One match, bit of a candle. Let's keep going here. A young fire like this needs constant attention, not only for the whole safety dimension, but just to keep it going. As I start to have a fire here, I'm gonna look for some larger pieces. and we're gonna to look to slowly build around it. If I see some smaller pieces, toss them in. And there we see 
Once the fire gets going, a little bit of air on it, carefully staying back, making sure you don't get your face burned. We have a fire going. We'll let it keep getting larger. We'll move to larger pieces of kindling, and finally we'll move to the actual firewood to burn. Or if we're in a campaign situation and don't have any cut wood, we can keep adding this on, get some salt pork fried up, take the grease, make some hellfire stew like we did in other episodes, and take that coffee on campaign episode. Go ahead and get your gut beans going. All right. Well, we've built a fire, whether you're in a living history environment at a historical society like we are with the Waterloo Area Historical Society, or you're out in the field with a campaigner event, the tenants all hold. We used one match. We used a little bit of a candle. We found some dry tinder. We learned to cut into it if we needed to. If it was wet, we learned what was best dry. And then we used the lee side of our fire starter and got a fire going. Hope this helps you get a better connection to the Civil War soldier out in the field and improves your impression. We'll see you in a few weeks.